Hello, welcome back everybody to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C. We're going to continue our histology lectures today. Specifically, I'm going to take you through a lab practical exam, which is heavy on histology. So let's practice this business already. Let's go. All right, as the introduction suggested, a good way to practice tissues or histology is just to grind it out. So we're going to look at I don't know, almost 50 different images here. Remember, we're going to practice things like the ID of the tissue, both general and specific. We're going to practice function. We're going to practice location. So if you'd like to join me, let's do some grinding. We'll start off with a cell here and see if we can handle labeling some parts of the cell. This thing here. Where I put the X and then let's go clockwise around here. I see a membranous organelle. Uh, it's squiggly. That's why I know it's membranous. It's away from the nuclear envelope, kind of freely floating in the cytoplasm. What is this? I would call that the Golgi. And I know functionally it receives packages from the ER. It modifies those packages and then repackages them and sends them out for secretion. Going clockwise, the next thing I see here is this vesicle. Now, it may just be vesicle. I'm not sure what the artist's intention was. Although there are some other things it could be. It could be a lysosome, which would be kind of the janitor of the cell cleaning up. It could be a peroxisome, which is detoxifying the system. Uh, ridding it of dangerous chemicals. The next line is pointing to the outside boundary of the cell. This, of course, would be the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. And we know it's primarily made of phospholipids arranged in a bilayer. All right, the little dots, that's the next structure. I'm on I only know that they're ribosomes because I see them glued on to other structures like right here. So remember we talked about ribosomes don't have to be glued on. They could be freely floating in the cytoplasm. But regardless of whether they're attached to an ER or freely floating, they're going to be creating proteins. The next structure around the clock is Looks like a jelly bean, and there's some better ones. I don't know why they picked that one to point at, but there's three of them in this image. And they kind of look like a jelly bean with some wiggles in the middle. And of course, this is mitochondrion. I'm just going to label it MT for short. And we know that those are all about making ATP. <clears throat> Next arrow is pointing to, well, some squiggly stuck to the nuclear envelope with ribosomes stuck to it. So this must be the rough style of ER, and its function is to create all synthesized protein. Any proteins are headed to the membrane, phospholipids headed to the membrane, and send those to the Golgi for repackaging and editing. Continuing around the clock, I see a structure inside the nucleus. It's not the nucleus, it's a structure inside the nucleus, and that would be the nucleolus, right? The nucleo and it's made of RNA and the function of it is to create ribosomes. The next arrow doesn't look like it's pointing at anything, but it is. It's pointing to the soup in which these organelles are floating. So this would be the cytoplasm. You may call it cytosol, but I try to avoid that word as much as possible. I'm just going to use the word cytoplasm and of course being that it is made of water, it's the primary site of metabolism in a cell. The next arrow is pointing to the outer part of the nucleus. You could call that nucleus, or you could call that the nuclear envelope. I'm not sure exactly which one would be correct. In my opinion, both of those would be correct, because it is pointing indeed to the nucleus and the outer part of the nuclear envelope. The final thing is pointing to an extension of the nuclear envelope, but it doesn't have dots on it. It doesn't have ribosomes. No, it doesn't look like the coral that we drew in our lectures, but this would be the smooth ER, which has a different function depending on whatever tissue you're in, but primarily it's for lipid synthesis. So between here and here, that is 
Look, we can do a straight shot, right? We can shoot an arrow straight through the nuclei. We have long cells, so this would be simple columnar epithelium. I can even see a goblet cell here and a goblet cell here secreting mucus. Function, secretion, absorption. Location, the GI tract. All right, think for a minute here. This is connective tissue. Specifically, it's blood. This pink donut is a red blood cell. This darker dude here with the dark staining nucleus is a white blood cell. And the white stuff in the back is the fluid matrix or the plasma. Function, transportation. Location, cardiovascular system. All right, so I got a mess here. And again, it's going to be from here to here. I have a mess. Mess of nuclei. Looks like they're all stacked upon each other, but if we can see individual cells, they all touch the basement. So this would be pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Specifically, it's probably even ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Why that? Well, I got a train wreck of nuclei. I've got many, many goblet, 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 many goblet cells. Function, in this case, lots of secretion of mucus. Uh, location, probably the respiratory tract. Right from here to here, we have many layers of cells, boxy on the bottom, squashed flat up top. We have an apical surface. We have a basement underneath, and we have connective tissue below that. So we have ABCs of epithelium. This would be stratified squamous epithelium. Function, protection. Location, skin. All right, I see soda straws, but they're elongated soda straws, right? There's a long soda straw right there with a lumen in the center, one row of boxy cells. So this would be simple cuboidal epithelium. Function, absorption and secretion. Location, kidney tubules or other tubules in the body. Okay, first this may seem tricky, but I again, I see this line and this line and this line and these lines here, which are screaming at me. Those are intercalated discs. And if I see the intercalated discs, I know I'm looking at cardiac muscle function, movement, of course, but to move blood, to pump blood out of the heart. Location, only the heart, especially the myocardial layer of the heart. Here again, from top to the dark line, many layers of cells, boxy at the bottom, flatter and flatter as we approach the top. I got an apical surface. I've got a nice distinct basement and connective tissue underneath. So this is stratified squamous epithelium. Function, protection, location, the skin, or say the esophagus, something like that. Okay, a couple we see on this image. Let's deal with the soda straw first, but it's not a normal soda straw, is it? It looks a little crowded in there. There's more than one layer of cells. So this is the very rare stratified cuboidal, the one that's not usually asked on exams. The location is ducts, and that's what we're seeing here is some duct, some tube, and we're looking down the lumens. So it is a soda straw image, but it's multiple layers of cuboid cells, stratified cuboidal epithelium. Around it, out here, looks nice and marbled, doesn't it? If we see the marbling, that's dense, irregular connective tissue. Okay, what's the first thing that pops to your mind here? Wavy bacon, right? That's what we call this wavy bacon, these long pink collagenous fibers in this wavy pattern. I know it's not actually bacon. This is dense, regular connective tissue. What are these purple things? They're the nuclei of the fibroblasts that are making it. What's the function of this? Well, strong tensile strength, especially in one direction. Where would I find this? Something like a tendon or a ligament or an aponeurosis. All right, what do you see here? Well, I see our scream guy. There he is. 
I see these teardrop shaped cells. I don't see any binucleate cells at the top, but already this is screaming to me this is transitional epithelium. And it is. The function is to transition, right? To get squashed and then come back up as the urinary bladder fills with the urine. So location on here would be the urinary bladder, ureters, and some of the kidney tubules. Okay, this looks like a blanket I've pulled apart. Lots of space in it, so much space I could drive a truck through it. So a specific type of tissue is loose connective areolar. This is your bubble wrap that provides protection to organs. Why do I see this interesting? These dark black elastic fibers. I see these broader pinky collagenous fibers. And I see the big purple nuclei of the fibroblasts. What's the white stuff in the background? Well, that's considered to be the matrix, so the ground substance. Location, surrounding organs, as like bubble wrap. All right, from here to here, what jumps out at you? Well, what jumps out at me are eyes in the jungle. I see the eyes in the jungle, and I think, hey, that's a cartilage. That's a hint I'm looking at cartilage. And the next thing I want to look at when I get past the chondrocytes that are in lacunae, and that's what all the eyes in the jungle are, is the matrix. Take a look at the matrix. Does the matrix look clean or dirty? Well, it looks dirty, dirty, right? It's, it looks cracked. This is not smooth stained glass. It's cracked. So this would be elastic cartilage. Where's the location? Say in the epiglottis or the pinna of the ear. It does provide support, but some elasticity to that support. What's here? Immediately, soda straws, right? No problem here. Single row of boxy cells, nice good lumen in the middle. This is simple cuboidal epithelium. Location, kidney tubules. Function, secretion, and absorption. From here to here, not my favorite picture, but it is clear. I see one row of rectangular cells. If I shoot an arrow, I can hit nearly all the nuclei in one shot. It does have some goblet cells secreting mucus, but there aren't very many. So I would call this simple columnar epithelium. The function, in this case secretion, although it may be absorption. And the location would be the GI tract, or the guts, the digestive system. All right, here's an interesting one. One thing I see is striation. That's kind of giving me a hint. I'm probably looking at muscle. What kind of muscle? Well, it's multinucleate, bifurcated, right? But the giveaway, the giveaway, the giveaway are these dark, staining black lines called intercalated discs that are part of cardiac muscle. So the type of tissue here is cardiac muscle, location the heart, but specifically the myocardium of the heart. And the function, of course, is to pump blood. All right, what's the first thing you see here? Hopefully it's the tree rings. And the tree rings smell like bone, right? Every time I see the osteon, central canal, I can notice the lamellar rings in between, the small dots or osteocytes. And this is very clearly bone tissue. Location, the bones. Function, support and protection. Connective tissue, remember this is connective tissue, but specifically it's bone tissue. Aha! Big white bubbles. Big white bubbles is adipose, 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 right? So much fat inside of these cells, lipids, that the nuclei is shoved over to the side. So specific type is adipose, connective tissue. Function, store fats, store energy. Could be cushion or insulation as well. Location, body fat, wrapping around some organs. All right, from here to here, I see an apical surface. I see a basement. I see connective tissue underneath. 
So this must be epithelium. What type is it? Well, it looks like elongated cells that are stacked, but it's not. It's that fake one, right? I can shoot my arrow across and I hit some nuclei, but I miss most of them. So this would be, oh, and I also see lots of goblet, 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 got lots of goblets here. So this is ciliated. Here's the cilia. Pseudo stratified. It's not quite stratified. It just looks like it's faking us out. Ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Location respiratory tract. Remember helping you bring particles up from deeper inside the respiratory airways. Function move particles out of the body by the motion of the cilia. Here we have you tell me, what do we have? Looks like a kite flying in the sky. It's our classic nervous system tissue. So there's a neuron, there's the cell body. Here's the axon coming out behind it. These here are probably neuron, I mean, dendrites of the neuron. And then these little boogers out here are support cells called glia or neuroglia. So this is nervous tissue. And this is all we talked about in our lecture was the neuron and the neuroglial support. Where would we find it? Brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves. From here to here, hmm, what do you see? I see eyes in the jungle. And if I see eyes in the jungle, I know I'm looking at little chondrocytes inside of their swimming pools called lacunae. So I know I'm looking at cartilage. But what kind of cartilage is there? There's three types. This is the Smooth, glassy matrix, right? No cracks, no bumps, no fuss, no fibers in the matrix. This is hyaline. Hyaline cartilage literally means the glass-like stained glass window look to me. Where would I find this? Well, the embryonic skeleton, some of the joint cartilages, and other support cartilages. And that's its function is support. Hmm, what's this one? What, what stands out to you? What I see primarily are the black snakes, but they're not our typical black snakes. They're branched. And that smells like reticular fibers. So when I see branched fibers, I know they're collagen, first of all, and I know this is reticular connective tissue. And I know that these things falling from it, kind of like cherry blossoms falling from cherry trees, are lymphocytes. And so that gives me a hint to the location, the lymphatic system, specifically like lymph nodes and the spleen. Function, support, and protect lymphatic structures. Okay, pretty easy one here from here to here. Got an apical surface, got a basement membrane down below, got connective tissue underneath. So what am I looking at? Epithelium. Which specific type of epithelium is it? Well, if I can shoot my arrow, I'm hitting all the nuclei. That tells me this is normal, simple, columnar epithelium. A few goblets. In fact, I might see one right here on the edge, and that's about it. So this is simple columnar epithelium found in the digestive tract very commonly. Function, absorption, and secretion. All right, this one's one of the harder ones. What do you see? I see wispy clouds. I see cotton candy. I see rows of ants crawling along my cotton candy. So what I'm looking here is fibrocartilage. Again, to me, the most missed one I've seen over the years. A tough one to get. If you got this one right, you badass, right? Okay, so this is fibrocartilage. Function is shock absorption. Location, like intervertebral discs, or the pubic symphysis, or some of the pads found like in knee joints, for instance. Fibrocartilage. Okay, let me outline one of the cells for you. There it is. Bulging middle. Tapered edges tightly packed. You may be thinking stratified squamous, but there's no apical surface. There's no basement. There's no connective tissue underlying it. So this is smooth muscle. 
smooth muscle location lining the walls of tubular or hollow organs like the stomach or the intestines or blood vessels. Function is movement as all muscles function is movement. But this would be a specific type of movement known as peristalsis, the slow rhythmic propulsion of material through tubular or hollow organs. Okay, we see pipes stacked on top of each other and they're ribbed pipes. So this should be screaming to you skeletal muscle, this herringbone pattern. I see elongated cells, I see striated cells, and I see multinucleate cells, all three characteristics of skeletal muscle. Where would I find this? Attached to the bones. It's voluntary and allows you to move your bones or sometimes move skin, especially in the face to make facial expression. Large osteons, central canal in the center, the rings of lamellae, the concentric rings heading out toward the edge of the osteon. The little black spots here are the osteocytes. And if you could see maybe here, these little rivers or the canals connecting those are the canaliculi. The brown stuff in the picture, the background is the hard bony calcified matrix. So remember, bone is connective tissue. You're looking at connective tissue, but this specifically is bone found in the skeleton, in the bones. From here to here, again, apical surface, basement membrane, connective tissue underneath. This has got to be epithelium, but what type? Well, I see goblet cell, goblet cell, goblet cell, goblet cell. I see some ciliation. If I shot this tissue with an arrow, I missed a lot of the nuclei. So it looks stratified, but it's falsely stratified. This is another pseudo stratified columnar epithelial slide, and it is ciliated as well. What's the function of this? Absorption and secretion. Looks like secretion here, mainly because so many goblet cells. Where would I find this? Respiratory tract, primarily. Okay, ignore the very top. So look from here down, all the way down. What do you see? What jumps out to you? Eyes in the jungle, maybe? If it's eyes in the jungle, we know to head straight for cartilage. And then once we know it's cartilage, we need to distinguish between the three types by looking at the matrix. And this matrix is clean and glassy. So clean glassy matrix is hyaline cartilage. Function, support, location, embryonic skeleton, costal cartilages, laryngeal cartilages, and some joint cartilages. Okay, what's here? More eyes in the jungle. Chondrocytes sitting in lacunae, but check out the matrix, right? It's dirty. It's cracked. It's elastic. Ah, elastic cartilage, right? So where would I find elastic cartilage? Well, in the pinna of the ear, in the epiglottis, in the throat, and not many other places, to be honest. It's very limited distribution, but this is elastic cartilage. What's the function? Support, but also some sort of elastic support, some resiliency, some spring back effect. This kind of looks to me like the storms on Jupiter or wispy clouds in the air or cotton candy with a row of ants crawling across it. So this is another image of fibrocartilage, long collagenous threads, function, shock absorption, location, intervertebral discs and the pubic symphysis and some of the pads found in the knee. This is a weird picture. Let's ignore the top now and let's just look down here. Again, if you're thinking that looks like epithelium on top, you would be right. So underneath it here, under the basement of the epithelium must be some kind of connective tissue. It looks kind of marbled to me, like it's marbling. We got collagenous fibers, but they're running in all kinds of directions. So this would be called dense, irregular connective tissue. Dense, irregular. It's gonna provide strength and support but in multiple directions. Location, something like a fibrous joint capsule where we need to resist pull in all directions. Okay, I see wiggle worms all over the slide. 
I see elastic waistband in the slide. So I'm looking at elastic connective tissue. It's not elastic cartilage. There's no eyes in the jungle. This is elastic connective tissue. The wiggles are elastin and anything pink in the background uh, should be collagen fibers. What's the function? Well, to take a hit and then to recoil, right? So to expand and recoil, expand and recoil, and something you might think would do that would be walls of large arteries, which is the location, or large or in the large bronchial airways. Very close up shot of the tree ring. So what we're looking at here is a very zoomed in osteon. That is the central canal. The edge of the osteon is way out here somewhere. I can't even see it. We're so zoomed in close, but I can see a lamellar ring. I can see another lamellar ring and another lamellar ring all the way out to the edge of the osteon. I can see each individual osteocyte. And I can get a really good shot now of the canaliculi, these little tiny canals that are coming out and connecting the different lamellar layers. The brown stuff in the background is all the bony, hard, calcified matrix of this connective tissue. So, all right, I see marble floor. If I see the marble floor, I should instantly go to dense, irregular connective tissue. Function is to resist pull in many directions, like in your shoulder joint. So a location would be fibrous joint capsules that need to withstand pulling in all directions. A little bit washed out, but I see one, two, three, four, five pipes. Each of the pipes is ribbed. So I have elongated, striated, and multinucleate cells. This must be skeletal muscle. That's that classic herringbone pattern. Where would I find this muscle? Well, attached to the bones, hence the name skeletal muscle. Function, move the bones. Or sometimes attached to the skin to move like facial, to make facial expressions. What sticks out here? Wavy bacon, wavy bacon. These long, regular collagenous fibers. Some dark stained nuclei of the fibroblasts, so this is connective tissue for sure. And more specifically, it's dense, regular connective tissue. It's the wavy bacon trick. Location, well, we know the function has to do with it can stand strength, but usually only in one direction, unidirectional strength. So we would find that like in a tendon or a ligament or an aponeurosis. Some fibers, tells me it's connective tissue. Lots of space between the fibers, tells me it's really loose. And this is the one you can drive a truck through. This is areolar tissue. This is the bubble wrap idea. This is the type of tissue that wraps around organs. So this is areolar. Loose connective tissue, yes, but specifically it's areolar tissue. I see here the elastic. I can't even see any collagen fibers because they're washed out by the background. I see the nuclei of the fibroblasts, and I see lots and lots and lots of matrix or ground substance in between the cells and the fibers. So areolar tissue, function, protection, bubble wrap, location, wrapping around organs to give them protection. What's here? Just ignore the top part and look at the rest of it. What do you see? I see tree branches see tree branches like you're looking through a bush. So if I see branched fibers, I'm going to think reticular immediately. And that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at reticular tissue. The black threads are collagen fibers, but they're branched fibers. So we call them reticular fibers. The cell types are lymphocytes. And that helps us with the location, which is found in lymphatic tissue. So this is functionally going to protect and support lymphatic tissue like the spleen and like lymph nodes reticular connective tissue. Big white bubbles, nuclei shoved over to the side of the cell. It's filled with lipids. So these are fatty, fatty, fat cells, also known as adipose tissue. So it is a connective tissue. Specifically, it's adipose. Functions store fat, store energy, insulate, 
and cushion. Location, wrapping around organs, found in the hypodermis, right under the skin. This is body fat, adipose. All right, how'd you do? If you didn't do so well, do it again, and then do it again. Try it until you got it nailed, and I promise you, when you walk into your practical, you are going to blow it away. If you do, leave a comment. Tell me how well you did. Thanks for watching. Check out some other videos in the series. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye. Mm,